Let's move into the lesson tonight, if we can. <clears throat> I'm going to go to, um, I think it's in, uh, yes, 1 Samuel, the second chapter. I'm going to read verse 9, and then I'm going to move uh, throughout this context of Scripture. I've been yearning to get back to teach on this beautiful soul of, of Hannah. So I'm going to teach you just to track with me as we move through these Scriptures and get to our main, main points. 1 Samuel, the second chapter, and verse 9. Um, it reads it from the King James Version, so we can get it there. He says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be slain in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. I want to talk a little bit about God, my defender and my keeper. We're still into the place of the power in prayer, um, but seeing God as my defender and my keeper encourages me in the thought of the power in prayer. First Chronicles 2 and 9, let me read it again and, and enlighten it. He says, he will keep or he will guard and protect. That's my defender, my protector. The feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Or they'll just disappear in the darkness. If you can see that in a meta metaphor in your mind, it's like a puff of smoke that just disappears into the darkness. Um, I think in Exodus, he says, the enemies you see today, you see them no more forever. So they get just gonna just go away like a puff into the darkness where you'll see them no more. This is God's promise to us. He says, for by strength shall no man prevail, not by their own strength. The, the Psalms here, or this, this uh, um, Samuel here, um, is bringing us to a place from the Psalm 17 of the prayer, testimony, and praise of the Lord. The prayer, testimony, and praise. We're dealing with the power of prayer. But the power of prayer must have a testimony. So if I'm praying for something, it will manifest. Ask, seek, knock. It's open, receive it, you got it. So if I'm praying, I'm waiting to get the manifestation for my testimony. And once the testimony comes, you can't keep silent. Praise will automatically happen because of the testimony that you know that you passed the test and now you have the praise. And they overcame by the testimony and the blood of the Lamb. I believe that there is a vital relationship between prayer test, and testimony. Praying, but the testimony has to come. And those, uh, these are some of, the mo some of the most powerful people that pray have some most powerful testimonies. We grew up, you always hear her say it, that we had testimonial service. And it was amazing to sit there and start hearing different ones pop up and testify. But you would look back at them like, I didn't know you were going through that. And you'd be surprised because they're on the other side of it. But you wonder, how in the world did you survive all that? You've been carless, homeless, jobless, brokeless. Is brokeless? And, uh, bro anyway, you've just been, just, you've been completely down. But every time you come to church, you're the loudest person in here. So I never see that about your life. But here you are now with this testimony. A pray. So prayer must come in, in, in relationship to, be vital relationship to a testimony. And a testimony must also accompany, accompany praise. Praising God for his divine upholding. His divine upholding. That's what the, um, the um, first Samuels 2 and 9 is speaking about. How our God is keeping the feet of his saints. Can you imagine the drama you would have walked into if God didn't just tell you, don't leave yet, leave later. It's a few minutes later from where you were trying to get to, you got to the corner and there was an accident. Or there was something that was going on that you didn't have to be in all that because he's ordering your steps and keeping your feet. The divine deliverance of God. Uh, God, my defender and my keeper. Watch the text in this one writing here when he talks about steps and how God directs. Jeremiah 10 and 23, Jeremiah says it like this in his prayer, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, thank you, okay, keep up with me tonight. 
I know the way a man, Jeremiah 10, 23, the way a man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Jeremiah 10, 23, New King James. It's not in me. As best as I try, it's not in me to direct my own steps. If God was not directing your steps, you would have stepped into something you couldn't have got out of. But God directs your steps and he leads you in the right direction. Hence why David says, I was glad when they said, let's go back into the house of the Lord. Because God made a way for you and I to get back here. Lord, our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. Many people think that you're directing your own course, but you're not. The Lord is directing your course. And you better thank him for it. Because that other guy you used to live with, the way he directed your course, it was always drama and confusion. So, correct me, Lord. This is a new translation. He said, correct me, Lord, but please be gentle. I'm reading still out of, out of Jeremiah 10, 23, 24. Correct me, but still be gentle. Do not correct me in anger, for I would die. If you don't think God loves you, look how he handles you and me. And his correction is, lo is love. And his wrath is mercy. And he makes sure that we learn and we recover from what we are going through. Our footsteps will always slip. It's a part of the nature of the walking. If we move away, especially when we move away from the course or of leaning on the Lord, footsteps will always slip. What gives me leverage and balance in understanding how not to slip is Psalms 119 and verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It is this word that gives me the guidance. And no matter how experienced I am or you are in life, Everybody needs a guide. I don't care. You need somebody who's going to tell you, don't go that way. And it's in this guide, we have the Holy Spirit, which is God's word, a light and a lamp that gives us directions in each step to our feet to give us wisdom for the long-range plans. That's what the word does. The enemy is not too concerned about you coming back to church. Nah. He's not too concerned about you being a Christian and being in church. He's not concerned about you getting started in church. He wants to wait till you get in the middle of the sea. Then he begins to rock the boat and see where your faith is going to stand. And it's there you have to realize that word must become an anchor to your soul. The devil's not fighting fair. He always come when you're right in between your destiny. But the Lord still directs our feet and holds us steady as we go. I want to shift the lesson in that first Samuel, second chapter, and verse 9. I want to walk through a little bit of this miracle of the, of the birth of Samuel. My defender and my keeper. Watch it go. This gift here, Samuel being born to Hannah, which means grace. The son that God gave her, Samuel, means asked of God, defender and keeper. Hannah was married to Elkanai, along with his other wife, Peniah. The story is so intriguing that it shows you why you need only one wife at a time because it can get crazy if you're trying to manage two. Another subject, y'all ain't gonna work that out. But Ilkanite in 1 Samuel's, the first chapter, verse four through five, he talks about how he gave to his wife, Peniah, and to her children a good portion. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion. But the Lord had shut her womb or close her womb from having children. Fascinating to me how 
God is the defender and protector, but here he closes off her desire, or closes off her wound from having children. She wanted what God needed. But it was only in the matter of time for it to come about. He gave her, Elkanine did, a double portion because he deeply loved Hannah. Benaiah, the other wife, treated Hannah deceitfully, annoying her, provoking her, and always just irritating her, irritating her, causing her to fret because she had no children. What a condition that she was in. First Samuel 1, 10 through 11. During one yearly visit to the house of the Lord, Hannah, bitter in soul, I'm paraphrasing this, begins to weep, First Samuel 1, 10 through 11. And vowed a vow, if God would remove this burden, barrenness from me, I will pledge my son back to him, and I will also pledge him as a Nazarene. First Samuel 1, 19 through 20. After prayer and the worship service had, had completed, as subsided or completed, Hannah here now goes home to her husband, Elkanai, in Rama. And he, Elkanai, knew Hannah, or they were intimate, and they had the child. The text says, and the Lord remembered Hannah and her prayer. First Samuel 1 and verse 20. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked of him from the Lord. We're in this, this power of prayer. And I want you to see this prayer of this young lady asking something from the Lord that only he can produce because he shut it up. So he has to open it back up. But in the process of time, because somebody said in the process of time, see, time is the equation that makes you want to give up. But when God is defending you and he is fighting for you, don't give up too soon. You can be closer than you've ever experienced to your vision and your desire and your promise just in a moment of giving up. In the process of time, they conceived. She bore, it was a son. Now, track with me, 1 Samuel 2nd chapter, verse 1. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. When God's defending you and he is the one that's working things out for you, and bringing you to the place where you can smile. That defender is going to change your attitude that I've been fighting for you to get this frown off your face for you to start smiling because your happy days are already here. She begins here now to open up this song about her defender. Her prayer has been answered. She begins to sing a different tune. So she goes from prayer, testimony, to praise. Are you tracking with me a little bit? Okay. So she, she knows she prayed about it. And now she's testifying about it. And then she's going to the praise service. Hannah's prayer in her spirit was prophetic in this verse, expressing the true nature of her song in prayer. Hannah in verse 1 through 10 of the, sec of the first chapter, verses, uh, first Samuel, the second chapter, verse 1 through 10, Hannah was praising God for the answer to her prayer, for her son. The theme here was poetic in her prayer, for the confidence that she had in God, the sovereign God that governs by grace. She knew she didn't rightly, should, should rightly should not have had it, but she prayed and God allowed it to happen. Mary would help us here in Luke, the first chapter, verse 46 to 49. Mary brings in the same concession of prayer and praise. In Luke 1, 29 to 49, it says, she says, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit had rejoiced in the God of my savior. Mary is saying this as she's picking up from Hannah's tone. Mary in Luke, the first chapter in verse 46, not Dr. House, this Mary. She could say it too. For he, she says that he had regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty done, had done me great things. Can you say that tonight in your spirit? That regardless of what it looks like, God's my defender. 
he's going to do great things for me. Therefore, your praise don't dictate how I feel about God. My soul magnifies the Lord. Oh, God. I exalt him. That's why praise service is so exciting in the mountaintop because you don't know who just got their victory. So they come and sit and all of a moment, the, all of a moment, the, all of a second, the word becomes a light to them and a lamp and their soul begins to boast out of what God has done. Mary was here so blessed by the Lord. She, she, she modeled her praise or a song, one called Magnificate, Magnificate, Magnify the Lord. Magnificate means to make or to declare great. It means to increase or extol. It means to praise enthusiastically. It means that I can't sit still when I begin to think about what I prayed about and what God did about what I prayed about. Now I'm stopped praying about it. I'm testifying about it. And my praise has become magnificent. I magnify the Lord. Psalm 66 and 2, he says, I was created to make his praise glorious. Hannah, 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 and Mary, like you and I tonight, are confident that God is in full control. Praising God for the gifts he has given us. All good and perfect gifts come from the Father of lights. First Samuel 2 and 2, track with me. Hannah praised God also because he was a rock for her. He was a firm, strong, unchanging God in a changing world. He was a rock for her. He was that stable place in her life, the defender, but also he was rock solid. In this shaky world that we live in, we need something secure, and that security is in Jesus. In the process of time, God gave her what she asked for, but God is always present in everything. He's never far. He's always near. He is consistent in all that he does. First Samuel, second chapter, three and four, put your eyes on it. He said, no doubt Hannah here was uttering the words she was thinking about how Panea had been treating her. Thinking about how she had been bothering her spirit and giving her this sad blues. From all the facts, it is clear that the figurative thought here is that the authority of God and God was in control in the state of the power of what was over all that was happening in Hannah's life. Hannah understood here absolutely without any doubt that this was the Messiah that was coming, but he was also operating in her life. Watch what she says here in 1 Samuel 2 and 4. Oh, God. Oh. Mm. The bows of the mighty men are broken. And those who stumble are girded with strength. The thing that was trying to break me is broken. I thought I had no defense, but God says, I got your back. What was trying to break you, I'm going to break it. And I wish I had a jacket. So I'm going to gird you with strength. You're not going to walk around looking weak anymore. When you finish this test, you're going to have a strength not a straight jacket, a strength jacket. I think they said it's called vibranium. I don't know. But however, God's going to anoint you with new strength. The reason why the devil is upset with you tonight, because he see you coming out with new strength. It's heavy now, but that's the way the weight room goes. The heavier you lift, the stronger you become. You don't lift nothing, you don't get no strength. The louder you praise, the louder you become. But it takes the enemy to have to come up against you. And God has to reverse that thing for your winning. Hannah's thinking about this girl, Penaya, Her adversary, let me serve you notice as I leave this text tonight. Live long enough, you're going to have a Penaya. Somebody's going to be troubling you no matter where you're at pressing you and stressing you about life but to know that God's defending you makes it a little bit easier to know I'm about to be jacked up with new strength Hannah was reflecting upon how the Lord in every circumstance knows how to turn it to your favor 
he gave her, him, her the son, and Hannah, which means grace, gave him, her the son, which is asked of God, and God girded her with new strength. So she sees the defender and the protector as somebody totally different now. And she goes from prayer, testimony, to praise. Listen to Hannah, to what she says again in second, First Samuel, second chapter, in verse 3 and 4. He says, the proud, and paraphrasing, the proud is humbled and brought low. And those who are stumbled are girded with strength. God is taking it and flipped it. I got to say this some other way. God knows how to take a pancake and turn it over. He knows when you're down on one side, but he'll flip you over to get down on the other side. But don't worry about the flipping, just worry about how you're coming out. Because when you come out, you're coming out with something greater than you had before you went in. Because God has defended you along the journey. He says this in verse 5 of 1 Samuel, the second chapter in verse 5. Come on, Clinton, get there. He said, those who are, were fallen uh, have heard themselves, hired, those who are fooled have hired themselves out for bread. And the hungry have chastened, have chastened to be hunger, to have ceased from to hunger. Even the barren has born seven, and she who had, had has many children has become feeble. She's thinking about her adversary and seeing how God has changed her life, and seeing how she was so prosperous, but now God is flipping the script. And she's becoming feeble and childless where well, God's given me seven children. Couldn't have one, but now he's given me seven. That's the defender that he is. Outcome in your life when you couldn't do nothing or have nothing. And I'll change your story. And if you give back to me what I gave to you, I'll give you seven more. I'll give you something greater than what you gave back to me. Let me put it another way. I gave you your life. Just give me your life back. If you give your life back to me, I'll bless your socks off. You would not have enough room to receive all that I'm going to give back to you. Hannah's prayer was a vow to give back her son unto the Lord. Hannah understood the covenant and bond. As 1 Samuel 2 chapter verse 21, you see she had three sons and two daughters. God multiplied back to her what all she gave. Hannah's prayer here is one that drops down through these verses, and I'm not going to drag you through them tonight. I'm going to get to my point. And Hannah's prayer here now leads into a point of excitement and praise. A season of change began to happen inside of her. She began to understand how God was controlling the whole narrative. But she had to go through something to understand how God was going to bring her out on the other side. How can life be so adverse and uncertain when you don't know how it's going to turn out? It's according to who is your defender. If God is your defender, don't care how much your back is against the wall. When God gets ready to bring you out, nothing can stop him from fighting what's trying to fight you. He's already got a full track record that he's undefeated and there's nothing can stop him oh principalities powers height the death the rulers any other creature nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us it's God and his divine upholding of the feet of his saints he keeps the saints feet no matter where the saints feet go God keeps the saints feet saints feet go in and out of places but God keeps the saints feet in this trouble out that trouble but God keeps the saints feet but the darkness of the wicked is going down and will disappear and go away but the saints will come out the adversaries of the Lord are broken in pieces first Samuels 2 and 10 the adversaries of the Lord are broken in pieces I feel you now Holy Ghost he said listen I'm about to destroy something Clinton because if they're your adversaries they're my adversaries so I'm gonna break them up into pieces I'm gonna shut shatter them completely when I thunder with my voice. The thunder of God is the voice of God. When God begins to speak out of his thunder it moves everything. Demons begin to tremble when they hear the thunder of the voice of God. The anointing of God says that God is fighting for me. First Samuel 2 verse 11. He says over there, he says, the Lord fights against those and he will scatter those. He will scatter 
scatter them. Scatter means to dismay, to break into pieces, to abolish, to put to an end. I said, hey God, what you're about to do, I'm about to thunder. And when my voice go out, it will bring a scattering to the enemy. It will not know where to go or which way to walk. I'm going to scatter them. The Lord will horn will be exalted. He will exalt the horn of his anointed. He will sing, we will sing praises to him from the place of sorrow to the place of praise. I said all that to bring you back to the first Samuel, the second chapter and verse one. The God that's defending, look what Hannah says. My Hannah says in her prayer, my heart rejoice in the Lord. The horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice at in, the, in your salvation. She gets happy and excited because she see how the story has turned out. God gave her what she prayed for and now she's got a praise service going on. Says my heart is rejoicing in the Lord. My horn shall be exalted. The horn is the level of praise and I'm smiling at my enemies. Y'all excuse me, I'm just talking to myself. Listen, I'm smiling at my enemies because they thought the story was over. But I'm sitting there grinning in my face and it ain't over. God just got started. Let me read it to you like this. My heart rejoiced in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. That's why I'm happy. My strength that I lost, I got it back. What strength did he give you, Hannah? I used to couldn't carry anything. Now I've gone for a term. Not only have I gone for a term, I'm about to birth and deliver. My promises was never sure but now I'm holding on to my promise and the devil tell me you're not going to deliver. You should have told me yes, yes, before I got pregnant but since I got pregnant with purpose I've got to bring it forth. I've gone through the trimesters so now I'm rejoicing. Hey, 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 it ain't your baby it's mine. It ain't your dream it's mine. It ain't your promise it's mine. It ain't what God told you it's what he told me. So I'm getting stronger every trimester. Are uh, you still pregnant? I'm still holding on. I'm still believing God. I'm still trusting God. It ain't happened yet but I'm still holding on I'm getting stronger every time I come to church I get stronger every time I open the word I get stronger every time I look back at what he said it makes me stronger I ain't got to deliver it he's got to deliver it I wish you tell somebody I feel getting stronger tonight I feel like I'm I'm getting stronger I feel like I'm getting stronger now I have my answer for my enemy look what she says here now I got my answer for my enemies I ain't got to say nothing but I'll shout right in your face I'll tell you how strong I am you didn't think I would last but I'm still here I'm stronger now than I was before how did you get that strong preacher I had a defender who was fighting for me when I couldn't fight for myself he was whooping devils when I couldn't whoop myself he made me victorious because he gave me the victory don't sit there like you get it yourself. God gave you the victory. God gave you the glory. God gave you access. He has defended you. Demons been trying to take you out, but God wouldn't let them take you out. The devil's been fighting your children, your job, your mind, your peace, but I'm not gonna let nothing take you out. You belong to me. I am your defender. Shake one neighbor and say, neighbor, now let's rejoice because God has rescued you. He has become your salvation. You made it out all right. God rescued you from behind enemy's line. He came and got you, 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 you. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, if you're still here, put your chest and good. Listen, my heart, my heart. This is a heart thing. This is my heart, my heart. My heart's rejoicing. My heart's rejoicing. My heart's rejoicing. Because God rescued me.
entrusted me with a vision that the enemy thought I would never have. But now I got it. Hold your hands up. Holy Spirit, I see where I'm going. And the enemy is tracking me. He don't want cheap stuff. So he's tracking this good stuff. I don't know where he is. But you know where he is. Defend me. Protect me. From every adversary. In the name of Jesus. And I promise you. My heart will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Jesus, you did it before. Jesus, so do it again. My praise is ready. My hallelujah is hot. My glory to God is fresh. Ah, God. Lord, I'm ready. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Put those hands back up. I'm done. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this moment. Even having obtained help from you, I continue into this day. What others said will never happen. My Panaya taunted me and talked down to me. But here I am, full term, ready to birth in the name of Jesus. Give God praise in the house.